it was really easy. Just go to zoom.us and click host a meeting and you can choose with your video on, with your video off, or just with your screen share, depending on what you're planning on doing that day. So if you're just planning on doing um, a lecture with PowerPoint, you may only need the screen share. Um, or you can do video on and then switch to screen share later. Uh, so if I click video on, then it'll take care. Now the very first time you do this, it will launch the application and probably ask you to download it if you haven't already and start an account. But after that, I just click open link and you're ready to go. So at this point in time, you can click invite participants and when you click on this, it can give you a URL, it can give you an invitation. If you copy the invitation, then it comes up as something that you can paste into your email. So you can email it to the students. You can also post it into an announcement for the students. And it has, uh, the students can either click on the link or they can uh, copy and paste the meeting ID number, all that stuff. So down here where it says start video, that's where you pick if you want to start video and if you do what video, for example, on my laptop, I have an integrated webcam and I have a separate webcam so I can pick which one. Once I click start video, then it will start. Now right now, there's only one participant because I haven't <laughs> invited anybody else to this one, but I just wanted to show you a couple of the things here. So along with inviting and managing participants whenever somebody comes in to enter the meeting they will enter here and this will there should be a little ding sound and you will see it down here that somebody is ready to enter the meeting you will have to manually let each person in to the meeting so that you just have a bunch of people flood in and out randomly over here, the chat feature, you can send a chat directly to a student. They can send one directly to you. You can also send a chat to the entire group and they can send a question to the entire group or an answer to the entire group. So it can stay as anonymous as you want, which is great for those students who like to, you know, um, sit in the back, don't like to speak up because they don't want to ask questions in front of their peers. This way they can send you a question anonymously and you can answer it to the whole class without um, them actually having to speak up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start my video now so you can see what that looks like. So you can make sure your video is working before the webcam here. Hi, there I am. <laughs> so you can check, make sure everything's all uh, ready to go before you even start. Now here the screen share, that's a helpful thing to do. When you click on screen share, you can either share your current screens or this is one of my favorites, you can share a whiteboard. And when you share the whiteboard, that gives you a screen that you can draw on, you can um, change color of font, you can erase things, you can put in text boxes and type, and your students can also draw back at you, type back at you, right on this. So that's very helpful, I find, for uh, math type things. So I'm going to go ahead and show you a few other things. So here I am back on the Zoom page, but now I am logged in. So I see all my options up here. Now this is the free version of the account. In addition to, join, to hosting a meeting on the spot, you can also schedule a meeting. This is great for office hours or lectures that are going to be held at a specific time so students know when to log on. If you go to schedule a meeting, you can name it, you can put the description, you can put in what time it's gonna start. Um, now with the free version, if you have three more participants, you can't go over 40 minutes, but um, that's uh, if you do go over, all you have to do is just close the meeting, start a new one, and send out another invitation. And in this case, you can have it set so that the meeting doesn't start until you're there. So say you put in that you're going to start at 9.30, but for whatever reason at 9.30 you don't quite get there until a few minutes past. They, anybody who tries to join the meeting will be put into a temporary waiting room that just says they're waiting for the host until the meeting, until you actually open the meeting. You can also put in there that you're going to um, enable them to join before you if you really want them to be able to get it go ahead and show up and talk to each other that might be a good thing or you can do the waiting room 
You can also record the meeting automatically. Uh, you can do this for both a uh, scheduled meeting and just a host a meeting quick video. You can also click record the meeting, which is great if you are recording lectures and some students might not be able to log on specifically at that time to watch the lecture. You can record it, upload it to YouTube later, and post it for them. So that's great for how to get started, but what does this actually look like in practice? So for the next last little part of the video, I'm going to show you a short clip from a uh, me using Zoom to teach a student, and by students I mean my 10-year-old daughter, but I am teaching her a little bit there. Um, and one of the tough things to teach online, I feel like, is math or quantitative sciences because you can't you, you really need to be showing stuff on screen while also showing them in person, which is why I think that Zoom is a great tool because they can see the camera. So if I need to show them something like, look, here is what the molecular structure in three dimensional looks like for carbon tetrachloride, or if I need to show them, um, here is how you put scientific notation into your calculator or something like that, I can show them in the video, but then I can also go to the uh, the screen capture and have that whiteboard where I'm working out a math problem or maybe I'm drawing a molecule or something like that. Now when I'm doing something like that where I'm writing out math or I'm drawing um, a molecule, I do use a pen tablet. This is a bamboo, but there's tons of pen tablets out there including some really inexpensive options that work great. You don't have to go out and get an iPad or something like that. So in this next video, you'll see a short bit of me using these techniques that I just talked about. All right, we're going to multiply fractions. No, stop. Right. Fine, fine, I'll erase it, I'll erase it. I'm erasing it. There you go. All right. One fourth <laughs> times two thirds equals, now you try it. I'm sending you something, sending you the answer. Okay. Okay. That is correct. Good job, Elena. All right. Everybody Yay. else, you can text me your answer and I'll tell you if you got it right. Yay. What was that? What was what? Uh, 